Hi, I'm Elizabeth, and I'm not buying books this year. This is the second in my Romance 101 series, and today I'm going to be talking about romance subgenres. So, how do we define a subgenre? Um, first, let's go back to the definition of a romance. Um, generally speaking, uh, at least in the United States, a romance is a book that has a central romantic relationship that ends in a happy ending. So that's kind of the very, very basic definition of a romance. Um, then as far as like subgenres go, they all also kind of have their own definitions, but they vary a lot. Some of them are related to setting, some of them are related to age, some of them are related to heat level, some of them are related to the kinds of conflicts or tropes that you'll find in them. So it's interesting that there's not one sort of set of defining characteristics, at least not that kind of a simple set of defining characteristics like there is for the romance genre as a whole. So um, I asked around on Twitter about this topic because I was having a little bit of trouble wrapping my mind around what we would consider to be a subgenre and what's like a sub subgenre and what's a trope and what's a gray area. <laughs> so um, I one of the things that came up was sort of the definition of a subgenre, and I hadn't really thought to ask about that. But my friend Roz Clark, who's a very smart lady, um, said that romance-like genres are about, I mean, subgenres like genres are about reader expectations. So if a reader picks up a romance, they're expecting to get a happy ending. If a romance picks up a book in a particular subgenre, they're going to have expectations related to that subgenre, the kinds of, and this is Roz's quote, basically, um, things that define the context for the characters and their stories, and give hints for the kinds of tropes, heat levels, and conflicts to expect. And I just thought that was really good, because that explains a lot about how subgenres came to be, and how they came to be so um, different in terms of the kinds of content that you would expect to see. Now, this is all very theoretical and probably boring, <laughs> but um, I'm going to go ahead and list out what um, RWA, so the Romance Writers of America, um, which is the Romance Writers Group in the United States, um, their read a category, so they, a, a romance award categories that they um, that they have that are related to romance subgenres, and this seems like a pretty good place to start. But these have also changed over the years, so I wouldn't say that this is either an exhaustive list or necessarily an inclusive one. So let's start with contemporaries. Um, a contemporary romance is set in our world in our time. So basically like anything that's happening to characters like us now. Um, it doesn't matter where in the world, it doesn't matter um, what other kind of content is in it, as long as it's set in our world in our time, that's contemporary. Um, as far as the next one, that's um, historicals. And historicals are set in our world, but set in the past. So rather than um, being set now, they're set in some time in the, in the past. Now, I think RWA um, considers anything before 1960 to be a historical. Now, um, I I'm not sure about that definition. Um, I've seen historicals set in the 1980s, for example, and I would still kind of consider that to be a historical romance, at least anything that's written now about the past. So I think... Um, and I think we're talking, it's kind of a, a, a moving target, what might be a considered a historical. But I'm not sure that matters anyway, since most of the historicals published today are, tend to be Regencies or Victorians. It's not exclusive. There are lots of other time periods written and lots of other places written about. But a lot of the stuff that is published by the big major publishing houses tends to be set in the UK in that time period, at least right now. Although that's been different depending on... Um, you know, where you are in the world and and when you started reading romance. That was not always the case. Um, the next subgenre that I want to talk about is romantic suspense. And this generally features heroes and heroines getting into some kind of danger. And this could be sort of mapped to like crime or thrillers or detective stories um, or heist novels. Um, the, it, it covers a wide range of potential topics, but the one commonality is that there is some element of suspense. So there is some element of heroes and heroines getting into some sort of scrape, generally involving often sort of violence or, or some difficult situation. The next category that um, RWA sets aside a Rita for is erotic. 
And I, this is part of why I would consider erotic romance to be its own subgenre, rather than, for example, a heat level in a contemporary subgenre. Um, and the reason is that the erotic romance subgenre for the Ritas is all about plots and romantic conflicts that hinge on characters' sexual journeys. So, for example, a plot in an erotic romance has to hinge on... Um, on some sort of sexual development in terms of those characters. Now, that's very different than, say, an ultra-sexy or hot contemporary, where um, the you could close the door on that sex scene and still basically have the same book. It would just be less sexy. Um, so I think that's, that's part of why I do consider erotic romance, which is also, <laughs> I would say, different than erotica, which is a genre completely separate from romance. Um, tangential to romance, but not necessarily ending in a happy ending. The next category that um, RWA has is inspirational romance. And these romances um, have religious themes and elements. Um, they are often, not always, at least not all the ones that are submitted into this category are um, of the evangelical Christian persuasion, but may have very many of them are, and at least the ones that I've ever seen win were Christian themed. Um, the next category is young adult, and this category is different than the other categories because this category relates to the age of the characters. So a young adult novel, everybody on YouTube knows what a young adult novel is, but there is a young adult romance, and not all young adults, not, young, not all young adult books are romances. So these books, at least as far as RWA is concerned, um, just have younger protagonists. The last category I want to talk about are paranormal romances, and the reason that I'm putting this one last um, is that I would say paranormal romances are a huge umbrella. And again, this is RWA's category. Um, and it's also a category that you see referred to a lot. Um, these books, I would say, are set in an alternate world. Now, by alternate world, I don't necessarily mean like off planet or in some kind of fantasy realm or in our world, but just a little bit different in some way. Although all of those things, I think, are encompassed by the paranormal category, at least as far as RWA is concerned. Um, there aren't separate categories for things like sci-fi, fantasy, urban fantasy, shifters versus vampires, fae, dystopian books, futuristic books. Um, I think all of those things are encompassed by paranormal romance. And this is why I think subgenres are a little bit difficult to talk about. Because, um, for example, um, I have a friend who talks a lot about paranormal romance and urban fantasy. She's a blogger. Um, she writes for book pushers. If you're interested, I'll link their site down below. Um, and we were talking once about the difference between paranormal romance and urban fantasy. And at least as far as the romance definition is concerned, the distinction she came up with was paranormal romance is a series with one set of characters per book, and urban fantasy is a, is a one, one major relationship per book, and urban fantasy follows the relationship of two characters throughout the whole series. So for example, so I think a good example of these are um, these books um, by Alona Andrews. Um, these are, this is I think the last one. Um, this is um, Wildfire by um, Alona Andrews. And this, fo this series follows two of the same characters throughout the three book arc. Um, however, something like, well, <laughs> The Immortals After Dark by Cresley Cole would be paranormal because those follow a different character different set of characters in each book. Now, that's not a critical distinction. It's not a distinction that everyone makes, but um, it does sort of lead us into the discussion of gray areas. <laughs> um, I think paranormal is a great way of discussing this because, like I said, there are lots of different things that kind of get lumped into paranormal. But if you're looking for a specific kind of book, let's say you want a sci-fi romance and you have to go looking at a paranormal romance category, you're going to find a lot of other things, a lot of shifters, for example, that may not be quite what you're looking for. So it sometimes helps, I think, to break down these categories further. Um, and sometimes that's going to be maybe a sub-sub-genre, or 
um, or, or referring to a specific period or a specific setting. Let me give you another example. I was talking a little bit with people about sports romance and small town romance. Now, often these are contemporaries, at least in terms of the way that we think about them. But there are plenty of small historical small towns. For example, Tessa Dare's Spindle Cove series. That's a small town. So even though it's a small town, we wouldn't necessarily refer to those as small town romances. We would typically still call them historicals. Or for example, sports. Um, one of my favorite historical writers, Teresa Romaine, wrote a, uh, a series about horse racing. <laughs> now, horse racing is a sport, but I don't think I would ever call that a sports romance. Generally speaking, when we talk about sports romances, we're talking about football or hockey or baseball or rugby or whatever other kind of contemporary sport that people are interested in. And those romances all have different expectations. So your expectations for a hockey romance is going to be a little different than your expectation for a football romance. So I think there are lots of gray areas when it comes to talking about subgenres. Another fun gray area is vintage romances. So for example, I have two romances here. Um, I'm going to try not to hold these in front of my face. Um, this one is Reign of Diamonds by Anne Wheel. Anne Wheel was writing Harlequin romances from about the early 1970s through the 1990s, I think. Um, and her books have a very distinct flavor. <laughs> um, you know what you're getting when you pick up an Anne Wheel book. And you know, generally speaking, what you're getting when you pick up an Anne Wheel book from the 1970s is going to be very similar to what you're getting from, say, a Violet Winspear book from the 1970s. Actually, that's a pretty bad example. Maybe more like a Charlotte Lamb book from the 1970s. Although all of these are authors have their own distinct characteristics, you are definitely getting a different flavor in these kinds of books than you are, for example, from this book. So this is Full Court Seduction by Cynthia Williams. This is a Kamani romance, so it's um, Harlequin's African-American romance line. And this is a contemporary. It also happens to be a sports romance. And um, I think these are, this is ba full court duh, basketball. Um, I haven't actually read this one yet, although I have read another one of, another one in this series and it's really, really good. But um, these are both contemporary romances. Um, even by RWA's definition, the 1970s are still, actually this one might've been 80, 80 anyway, um, the, um, are still contemporary romances. But if you pick up this book thinking it's a contemporary romance, it's not set in our world and time. If you pick up this book in a contemporary as a contemporary romance, this is going to make sense as a contemporary romance. So that's another gray area. So not only have contemporary romances changed a lot over the years as time has marched on, um, historical romances have actually changed a lot as the years have marched on. So for example, this is the Black Lion by Jude Devereaux. This book was published in 1980. Um, I think it's a medieval, which you don't see as much of anymore um, as you used to. There used to be a lot of medievals published and now there just aren't that many anymore. Um, the expectations for a book published in 1980 are going to be very, very different than the expectations for a book like this one, for example. This is Tempest by Beverly Jenkins. This was published in 2018. So, um, not only is the setting totally different, and this one features African-American characters, um, and it's set in the Old West, the American West, um, the, the expectations for those books are going to be very different. The expectation for hero behavior is going to be very different, and the kinds of heroines that we're going to have are going to be different. So even though these books are set in the past, and I probably picked two terrible examples because they're really, really different settings. I should have picked probably um, the... Um, uh, the King's Man by Elizabeth Kingston, because that book is another medieval set in the past, set in the same time period as The Black Lion, but it's a really different book, I bet, than The Black Lion is. <laughs> so finally, I want to talk about cross-genre or genre blurring or multi-genre books. So these are tough to classify because there are definitely books, for example, like the Beyond series by Kit Rocha, um, that is a dystopian, sci-fi, erotic, futuristic series. <laughs> um, and I don't know what exactly you call something like that. Is it? It's not it's not paranormal for sure. There's nothing paranormal about it. It's just set in the future. So it's more like sci-fi or maybe even set in an alternate present. So it's definitely not 
um, something that falls into those like standard Rita definition type um, categories. So there's some information about romance subgenres. I hope this has been interesting and educational and hopefully entertaining. I guess we'll see. <laughs> um, thanks for watching. Have a great week. Doubt not. Slay some words. And Lex has your back. Bye.